Ladies and gentlemen, this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I say that as the manhunt continues for Brian Laundrie in connection with the death of his fiancée, Gabby Petito. It's a subject that I want to get into, both subjects actually, with Ruth Glenn. Ruth Glenn is the president of the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Thanks so much for being on my program. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. Always pleased to talk about domestic violence. Well, let's talk about the significance of the month before we get to this particular case about which I have some specific questions. I'm sure that you have it at your fingertips, some of the data that causes there to be a month where you say, hey, we all need to be aware of this. Um, I have data, absolutely. Uh, But more importantly, we need to talk about what is what we call a public health crisis in domestic violence. Um, NCADB has been in existence for over 40 years trying to deal with this issue. Uh, we raise a public awareness. We work on policy. We have projects and programs. Um, I personally, Michael, would like to be without a job one day. Um, but the true fact is that as we speak, there's even a hearing occurring in the Senate on the Violence Against Women Act, which is up for reauthorization. What that means is that we still have a problem with domestic violence. It's still a stereotypical family matter. It's still not taken seriously. And I think uh, Gabby's gift to us is being able to bring this to the forefront and talk about it at an even even higher level, and particularly during Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Does the situation seem to get better, worse, or stay the same if you were to look at the past 40 years? Um, It's stayed about the same. I think that that's a very complex question to answer, Um, but it's stayed about the same. And though we've seen a decrease in actual domestic violence incidents per some studies and reports, we've seen an increase in lethality. In other words, uh, women in particular, but victims and survivors in general dying at the hands of those that hurt them. The uh, the case of Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry getting a tremendous amount of, of attention, uh, whether other cases should be warranted the same level of attention is an interesting subject in and of itself. But but Ruth Glenn, here's how I got to you. I I've paid close attention to that traffic stop in Moab, Utah, that yes. occurred on August the 12th. And with my untrained eye, I've wondered whether the police response was appropriate. And then I saw you quoted in the Washington Post talking about exactly that issue. And I thought, that's the perfect guest to have on the program and just lend all of us your analysis. When you see that video, what is it that you see? Um, thank you so much again, Michael. Um, I'm so I'm just always glad to lend that trained eye to these situations. Um, Law enforcement in that particular incident, from my perspective, uh, missed several red flags. I don't think it was deliberate. I don't think that they meant to miss those flags. But what it definitely pointed to me uh, was that there needed to definitely be more education, definitely more training. And definitely a more thorough assessment of what was happening on that scene, even in that particular incident. Um, There were uh, many, many red flags that may have, could have uh, prevented what ended up happening to Gabby. What's top of mind? Give me an example of the red flag you're thinking of. Absolutely. Top of mind is um, particularly in the instance where she is taking blame. He is blaming her. She's distressed um, and not delving into why is she responding that way? So distressed. Um, Someone used the term hysterical. I I don't think that that's appropriate, Um, but she definitely was distressed. Um, The injury on his face, for instance, um, They both admitted that that was caused by Gabby, but why was that caused by Gabby? Um, She's a very slight young lady. um, So let's even get to a practical space or uh, perspective, which is she's a very slight young lady. So what was happening for her to uh, put that injury on his eye? Um, The whole idea that he was so calm, cool, and collected, um, most disturbing to me, in the interactions with him and the cops were uh, law enforcement were uh, kind of that good old boy feeling that 
you know, that, oh, you know how they get. And really um, almost a, a sexist type of um, situation that was happening there. And I'm talking specifically about this particular incident because we are very well aware that domestic violence can occur in all types of situations and relationships. But in this particular one, um, I felt very strongly that in or if he was controlling and manipulating that situation by being friendly and, and uh, um, calm with, with uh, law enforcement. When the call comes in, the 911 call comes in, it very clearly yeah. is a call that says he's slapping her. Here's just a snippet of it. Yep. Yeah. What were they doing? Uh, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? Yes, and then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. Clearly, that information was communicated by eyewitnesses, two of them, I believe, to the 911 center. I'm still a little hazy as to what exactly was told to the police officers who made the car stop. But the question that I wanted to ask you, Ruth, is in a circumstance like this, should the police necessarily accept the the words of a woman who might be being victimized if she says, oh, no, it's OK, I'm fine. Please don't do anything about this. Like, what's the appropriate response? The appropriate response. So, so first of all, thank you for recognizing that, because that is also very critical, which is um, when you are in a situation where somebody is hurting you and it's a domestic violence situation, you are going to do all that you can to address the unknown. You don't know if police are going to take him. You don't know if he's going to be stranded on a Utah road. I mean, the list goes on and on of the unknowns. Uh, there was one point where she did talk about he had hurt her. But if you, if you look at it, uh, she immediately retracts that. That's not a recantation because you want something, uh, you know, you're just being difficult, which we've heard many times before. It's a recantation because you don't know what the the unknown is and you're really afraid of what those things might, what things might happen as you move forward. So there's always a reticent um, to, I shouldn't even say reticence. There's always a desire of a victim survivor to make sure that the situation is okay. And let's make it, make him or her, him stop hurting me in the moment. Let's just make that stop. I can handle the rest. I think I've got a short snippet of where she is explaining about what he had done to her face. Let's listen. Right. Did he hit you, though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him, and then uh, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Because you know, I guess, yeah, but I hit him first. Where did he hit you? Don't don't worry, just be honest. He like grabbed my face, like I guess. Uh um, He didn't like hit me in the face. Like he didn't like. Did he slap but, your face or what? Well, like, he, like, grabbed me, like, with his nail, and I guess that's why it was, I like, didn't really have a cut right here, like, a peel of yeah. I know the audio quality is, is hard to hear, but she's saying yeah. that he did grab her face initially, and then she seems to back off from it and says, well, he really didn't slap me. But, but clearly, Ruth, there had been a physical altercation between the two of them. Absolutely. Um, this, this is also a typical response for a survivor or victim of domestic violence is you begin to minimize. You begin to really um, take responsibility yourself. So the responsibility is removed from the person who's hurting you. You begin to minimize so that there's, you know, again, it, it buys you some time to really formulate what could or could not happen in this particular situation. So minimizing, uh, taking responsibility yourself, um, recantation, um, retracting, I prefer to call it. All of those things are very, very typical when um, you come upon somebody who's being hurt by someone else. A trained officer, appropriately trained officer, might have spent even more time with Gabby in that particular second there, or seconds there, to delve a little bit further and even, quite honestly, use a little bit of a different tone, which is, you know, Um, sometimes things happen. And what I need from you is for you to understand I'm here to help you. So really setting the tone for her to feel like she can tell the truth or be more transparent about what happened. 
sum up, what does Ruth Glenn, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence president, want everyone to know in terms of what this case says to a larger issue? Um, A couple of things. One is that we are still dealing with the crisis of domestic violence in this country. Um, Until we have the kinds of conversations that you and I are having right now, uh, really delving into the dynamics of domestic violence and understanding about those that harm others and those who fall victim to that, uh, we need to continue to have these conversations. Secondly, uh, let's make sure that we're good bystanders and helpers. And by that, I mean really understanding ourselves so that when we see something like the 911 caller who did a fantastic job, recognize that this was not okay and never even had to use the words domestic violence. But let's bring it out of the shadows and continue to talk about it. Um, as I started with uh, this off with my goal, I'd like to be without a job one day. It would be really nice. We we would all like to put you out of work. Thank you so much for your expertise and willingness to be here. As I as I mentioned, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we thank Ruth Glenn. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Michael. Take good care.